This is the essence of morality in the Christian moral framework. That God's moral actions are indistinguishable from His moral essence. Every moral action He takes by necessity emanates from a place of moral goodness. Period. No exceptions. God is good all the time, as the song goes. So everything he does is good and morally perfect. Hence, there is no arbitrariness in God. Period. None at all. None. Now, just a side note. This is not true, for example, of Islam. You have in Islam a concept known as Allah's whimsy. What is Allah's whimsy? Well, I'm glad you asked. Allah's whimsy is, one time I was watching this movie about, uh, actually I forget what it was about. I was watching a movie. And they said, don't go into that land over there. Why not? Because it is subject to Allah's whimsy. Uh, yeah, it was a really weird concept. It means that Allah can get freaky on you. It means Allah can get freaky on you for no particularly good reason. Just because Allah feels like it. You're walking around with your camels and your, your camels and your what? Your spices? <laughs> okay, you're walking around with your camels and your spices, and Allah just goes boom, psh, your camel dies. Ah! What happened? Allah's whimsy. Now you're supposed to justify Allah's actions after the fact. Go, oh, it was good. Why well, was it good? Because Allah did it. It's good. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Allah. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. It's the nature of Islam, theologically speaking. It's even called submission. Islam, that's what it means. Submit, submit, submit to Allah. Now, Christian theological concept, it's a lot more simple, but it's also in essence true, and it's grounded more effectively. God's actions are not good according to the divine command theory. Hence, no arbitrariness. God doesn't do something evil and we all go, oh, it's good, it's good, no, it's good, because uh, God. That's not actually how it works. God's actions are always good because they, in essence, they emanate from the place of God's pure essence, which is good, period, always good. They emanate from a place of pure goodness. Thus, if you cannot see how they are good, you are just not perceiving it accurately. They are good. Now, I won't go into the sidetrack on uh, the story of Abraham and Isaac because that's the potential monkey wrench in the whole thing. And I've gone through a thing on that. You can check it out on one of the other videos. The point being is you're supposed to notice that in that particular instance, God commands something that is not in fact good. It's cray cray. And you're supposed to go, well, but God, God's in essence always good. Therefore, it must be good and I just can't perceive it accurately. You're supposed to wrestle with your own perceptions of God's actions and decide organically from a place of truth that they are in fact good. Why? Because they emanate from God's total being, which is in essence always good, no exceptions, period. God is moral perfection and execution. That is Christian theological concept. Now, this potentially answers the problem of evil. It potentially does. I'm not saying it definitely does, but it potentially does. How so? Because God cannot act in a way inconsistent with his nature. His nature is moral perfection. Period. Now, I've said this in another video, but think about this for a second. There is a, there is a famous Christian uh, expression, and it's actually based on a scripture. Nothing is impossible with God. It is not technically true. There is something impossible with God. It's true in the sense of omnipotence, like God could do anything in this world that he wants, but it is not technically true. Nothing is impossible with God. A little later on in the Bible it says it's impossible for God to lie. Oh, wow, there's a real Bible contradiction for a real one. <laughs> Nothing is impossible with God, but wait, it's impossible for God to lie. Aha, technically not true that nothing is impossible with God. It is impossible for God to act in a way inconsistent with himself. 
Period. Always. Forever and always true. God is good all the time as the song goes. God is good all the time. God, that's not how it goes. But that's a, there's a song. Trust me, there's a Christian song. It's great. It's great. You love it. Uh, God is good all the time. And he is incapable of acting in a way inconsistent with himself. Thus, his actions are always emanate from a place of moral perfection. Now, let's take another look at the problem of evil. Keeping that in mind. You know, like I said, this potentially solves the problem of evil. How so? Well, you, there is a subject. One of God's creations is now acting in a way that is quote-unquote immoral. What does God do? God only does what he can do that is consistent with moral perfection. He cannot intervene. Why? Because he is more powerful than the person. But he has created the person to be completely independent of his will. Only yield to his will as God pre put, convicts his heart to do it. Huh? He's created this being with free will. This being is sovereign over his own actions. Thus the only way God can intervene in an evil person's behavior is to speak to their heart. He can't stop them from doing it. Why? Because that's morally wrong. That's why. It's morally wrong. God is more powerful than his subject. If God were to intervene and override someone's sovereign will in this instance, what would stop him from overriding sovereign will in all other instances? Eliminating altogether human freedom, period. Now, I don't know if that makes complete sense to you, but it actually potentially answers the problem of evil. God is going to override the sovereignty of the guy who's about to, like, harm a small child. What is to stop God from overriding the sovereignty of you when you're going to do something harmless but not pleasing in the sight of God? I don't know, whatever, whatever sick thing you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to do something weird. You're going to do something weird today. You're going to do something sick, I promise. <laughs> and God's not going to like it. But he's not going to stop you from doing it. Why? Because he created you to be an independent, sovereign being completely independent from him, with free will. He does not stop the evil person per from performing the evil act because that would be wrong. That would be wrong of him. That would be using his power in a way that it isn't authorized for overriding the sovereign free will of the moral agent. It's logically consistent. We just don't understand what moral perfection actually is. Moral perfection cannot act in any way inconsistent with itself, and it always has to act in all ways under all circumstances, good, right, and correct. The good, right, and correct thing to do for a more powerful being watching an evil being, an evil moral agent about to commit an evil act is to not intervene. Speak to their heart. Send Craig to try and reason with the person. You know, you don't really want to hurt that small child. That's not the nice thing to do. The guy's like, shut up. <laughs> I'm doing it. There's no reasoning with them. He goes ahead and does it. I, like I said, I don't, I'm not sure that you're necessarily going to just totally accept that but it potentially answers the problem of evil for good. Amen.